Drake High School students today benefit from the options provided by academies, small alternative learning communities at Drake. However, most people know very little about the culture of alternative learning at Drake or where the ideas of these programs came from. They can be tracked back to 1971, the start of the first program, School Within a School. There were a degree of uh, students and maybe a smaller degree of teachers uh, who were tired of the usual system. Was people interested in an alternative education? Teachers there were clearly trying to do something more unique. The whole idea of an alternative school and a school where students got a say. There were kids who were athletes who got physical education credit for the fact that they were skating three hours a day. It wasn't just these are the specific classes you need, it was looking at education and empowering children to be a part of their education. You made up your own schedule. We had a poetry class that was taught by students. We didn't have Spanish books, we just, um, we just talked. We went to her house and we had a swim party and we all talked in Spanish the whole day. When we had um, projects, that we, the second semester always had um, projects that the students voted on. There was an Ashland project where we would read five plays that were being put on in Ashland, learn something about the history of those playwrights and what was going on in the world when they were being written, drive up to Ashland, camp out for a week, see the plays. As a school, we went on several field trips. One of them, I remember going out to Point Reyes for a weekend. With 25 kids having to negotiate living together and planning together, how to raise the money to get there, those were really important lessons. There was a wilderness project, a marine biology project, where they rode bikes up and down the coast of California and studied marine, marine biology. There were um, political action uh, projects. And not very much class time. If you're going to uh, have that much uh, more freedom than the uh, tighter structure that uh, was taking place at Drake, then uh, you're running risks. There just wasn't the incentive. It's like if you didn't do your homework or didn't get things done like, you know, on time, in time, there weren't the consequences. I ended up leaving after the first year. I didn't feel like I had enough structured time. There were. Uh, some people that didn't have the responsibility that was necessary to uh, make that successful. Yes, there were kids who probably signed up for the easiest classes they could find. I needed to have more input from teachers and other students. Their education became softer and mushier than was good for them or for any kids. There were kids who may have started that way but then became truly interested in something, got caught on fire. What I learned at SWAS all resonated with me because I felt like I was, I had a voice in what was going on and I, I, um, I felt like it was what education should be. One of the very best things was that students were completely responsible for evaluating themselves. You literally wrote about why you felt you deserved a certain grade, you proposed a grade, your teacher would then write something in response and then you would together decide on a grade. I knew that I was the person that was going to know what I was going to need and how I was going to get it. And I, I know people to this day still let other people make their decisions for them about how their life should go. And so I really credit SWAS as leading, leading me that way. I learned that learning is the goal and that the aim is to learn as much as you can and to always be open to educational opportunities, to never feel that you've stopped being a student and that learning is, is a privilege. It was the teachers who decided to end SWAS, and in fact, the student population and the parent population were very angry, but we felt as if times were changing. Colleges and schools needed things to be more traditional. As a teacher in SWAS, part of the job was to be a surrogate parent. Teachers were very involved in the students' lives, and the students um, felt very close. The relationship between a lot of students and teachers was more uh, relaxed and closer than uh, in other situations. The Ashland trip and the murals in Devonshire are just some of the legacies left by SWAS. But more importantly, it was the beginning of a Drake's unique learning options. I've always secretly felt sort of proud that the academies were if not the actual children of the SWAS program, maybe they were the stepchildren, because certainly the, the uh, academies 
share some of that same philosophy. SWAS may have ended in 1984, but it was far from the end of alternative learning at Drake. The academies live on a testament to SWAS. The freshman and sophomore programs at Drake, there are three. There's Rock, which is Revolution of Core Knowledge, and that is four classes out of your day. Coming in and um, just being put in a group with a bunch of other people who also were just coming into high school and didn't really have a said group already, um, and then working with them for, for two years um, kind of is what made the, the foundation of what I really loved about Rock. There's also Galileo and Mobius, which are the same deal with the freshman and sophomore learning. What was nice about Mobius is that it was group oriented and you, you realize that, I think that's the biggest thing I learned is that more people have ideas than just you and you kind of have to, you really have to collaborate. Then for juniors and seniors there are also three academies offered, engineering, Comicad, and CDISC. If you want to like go into film or something very specific and there's an academy for that, then you have a lot greater of a chance to go into something like that. So they leave high school with a desire and also some skills in that desire area. So together at Drake, there's so many different types of people. So those all combine with all the different academies and that makes a really cool community. I have classes that are just normal school, but I also get them to do Comicad and it's like a beautiful mixture of, you get your general ed, you get the context for everything, and then you get to do the art and the creative work. A lot of kids want to be in them and I think they hear things like, um, you know, if you're not in Rock or Mobius or Galileo, you know, it's not even worth going to Drake. There are certain stigmas with each academy. My um, criticisms of Comic Cat was that there wasn't a lot of structure, I guess. Certain like social groups, I think, are created out of those academies, which aren't necessarily bad things, but in certain situations can be a bad thing. It just, it, there's not a lot of like mixing. Everyone had the group that they were were in already. Right, everyone so, had a couple of years to figure out who they want to hang out with already. Right, so it was harder to like integrate everyone together. Right, definitely it's a great thing to have the option open. Um, having done academies and now being in regular school, I can say I like them both a lot. These are the visible after effects of SWAS, but something more important still remains from this program. SWAS was, and still is, in its essence, a community that loves and supports its members. This is a rare thing in a high school program, a sense of family that hopefully still exists in the pockets of Cervantes Drake today.